Thank you for joining me for another PRP injection video. Here we have a middle-aged man. He's dealing with mostly pain around the gluteal regions where they attach to the ilia, but also around the, um, the hip joint itself radiating to the front inguinal fold. So you saw me here drawing out some of my landmarks and then assessing for tenderness by firm pressure uh, into the regions of those gluteal attachments. Uh, that spot right there is marking out the intraarticular approach for the hip, the lateral approach. Psychologically a little easier than the anterior approach. Probably sensation-wise it's a little more comfortable too. Um, this patient didn't have any tenderness in the spine. Spinous process, facets, transverse process, easily lumbar ligaments. So he really just had it localized in the gluteus major tendon attachments, much more on his left side than his right side. So I have a standardized way that I go through all of the different points to assess for tenderness uh, and infer ligamentous laxity in regions where it's hard to check motion. In the spine, it's easy Let's to check after, motion. Let's go after, I would say, technically the the most difficult one technically okay, first, sure. which is this. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's go back here, check under. Let's go about right there. Yeah, there it is. That's it? Yeah, it's right at okay. the neck okay. of the femur. Okay. So it's yeah. calm bone. Okay. And then here, it's going to inject in like five cc's. What do you think? Do you want the nitrous? That wasn't too bad. If it's like that, well, I think we could maybe cool. be okay, you know? That's the deepest one. Okay, well, let's just, you know, we'll think optimistically. I am pretty. All right, it cool. Feels, feels okay, man. So I'm going to get this one right here. Okay. Yeah, when you go inside the hip joint, mm -hmm. it doesn't sting as much. Mm -hmm. But when you're when you're going outside of a joint, mm -hmm. the um, the PRP sensation is going to be mm -hmm. much more noticeable. Gotcha. And if at any point you change your mind, you want me to okay. get that going. You just say the word. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, very few people are going to do this for fun, mm -hmm. but it's tolerable. Mm -hmm. well, a lot of the times when I'm doing more intense procedures, I'll tell people, you may already be familiar with this tribe. Mm. There's a tribe in South America mm -hmm. that do the bullet ant Oh bullets. boy, I show my students that. Wow. You know that one? Oh man, that's a rite of passage. Huh? <laughs> Seriously. Mm. Uh, I don't know if anyone does it like mm. more than they do. Mm -hmm. They're really trying to catch mm. up with the women. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. on there. Yeah. That's stunning. This is that's crazy. Put this on here. I do wonder, like, what rises to the level of an argument after that? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> like, is the riverbed just so deep, oh, like, yeah, it just, right. nothing bothers them? Yeah, or then it just... just continues, right, for a day or something, right? This is yeah. Pain. Yeah. Yeah, 
I saw one where a friend did it with his friend because he was scared. I'm like, wow, that's friendship, right? Mm. He had been through the ritual and he decided to help his friend. He went through it again. I'm like, oh, boy. I thought they have to go through it like mm. 20 or 30 times well, in their might. life. They might, yeah. I don't know. I was like, wow. I thought they had to do it like yearly. Oh, no, they might, yeah. It's hard to say, but boy. Best friend joined the, with him and then transferred and got a, into the seals. Uh, and that was what we would have a dawning training for him. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, well, don't some people die sometimes? Uh, in well, training? it's rare. They, they, they try to mitigate the risk. They had a recent one where a kid from Yale did this, but he developed a bacterial infection and it was post op. I was training that spread that didn't catch it fast enough to be bad. And there have been a couple other instances where uh, they, they have, but usually they, they, said they, they try to mitigate those risks fairly, fairly well. And hey, we're almost done. All right. Just got like four yeah, spots okay, left. Cool. And he said the worst was. Forty-five minutes to sleep from ooh, ooh, that's hard. twelve oh one Monday to they go to Friday afternoon. They get two like forty-five minute breaks. Ooh, I feel that. Yeah. You know what I just realized? Mm -hmm. With doing the twelve bottles, mm -hmm. we're not going to have any. We're not going to have anything left for your knees. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't charge you for the knees, yeah. obviously. Okay. All right. Well, maybe um, reschedule or something. Yeah, I, I, um, just with these points, and I've yeah, been going okay. through this them. This is the most painful, so the knee comes and goes, it's episodic, but if I need to reschedule to come over. You think the rapamycin will help in terms of inflammation? It certainly is a good, and maybe this is part of, sometimes things happen for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah. uh, it's just, oh, I forgot, yeah. but sometimes there's kind of a, there's a reason why. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it probably would be best to get that inf anti-inflammatory effect of okay. rapamycin on board okay. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it's going to help modulate. Yeah. Because there's, in the research, when you look at using PRP for autoimmune, it's really good. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, you could see, oh, it could increase the immune system's mm -hmm. activity. It could make it worse. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes sense to get that on board first.